Welcome to this WiseL tutorial. In this session we're going to teach you how to get started with Microsoft Reporting Services. What we'll teach you in this session is first of all how to create a brand new report project. That involves how to open up Visual Studio and that's different depending on which version of SQL Server you're using. We'll show you how to choose the appropriate template for a report project and then a quick whirlwind tour of the Visual Studio screen including how to work with the various windows. Once we've done that, we'll talk to you about how to create basic reports. These won't be based on data to begin with, these will just be the absolute basic techniques. So we'll talk about how to add a report to a project, how you then add report items into a report, we'll teach you how to move and position report items so you get a neat layout, and finally show you three ways to format report items. So let's get started. To get started with a report project, you first of all need to open up the relevant application and that's entirely dependent on which version of the software you have installed. Uh, head down to the start menu first of all and then all programs. I've actually got several versions of SQL Server installed on this machine. So you can see SQL Server 2008 R2. If you have this version installed, then the option you're looking for is SQL Server Business Intelligence Development Studio. It's a bit of a mouthful, you can use BIDS for short. If you have a later version of SQL Server, 2012 is the uh, latest one I have installed, then you can choose the SQL Server Data Tools, which is exactly the same option as BIDS for 2008 R2. What these two options actually do is open up the relevant copy of Visual Studio. So you could just jump straight to the Visual Studio folder and open up Visual Studio 2008 if you're in 2008 R2, or Visual Studio 2010 if you're working in SQL Server 2012. Ooh, somewhat confusing, but the end result, I'm just going to go back to SQL Server 2012 and choose SQL Server Data Tools. The end result of choosing any of those options is it should open up Visual Studio into whichever environment the screen has been set up for. Once you've opened up Visual Studio, the next job is to create a report project. And to do that, you need to choose the relevant template. So head to the file menu first of all and choose new and then choose project. You could also use the keyboard shortcut, control and shift and n. But whichever of those options you choose, you ought to end up with a list of all of your available templates. Now if you've opened up Visual Studio via the bids link or the SQL Server Data Tools link, you should already be looking at the business intelligence category. If not, just click onto the business intelligence category on the left hand side. Then in the list you're looking for something called a report server project. So select that option and then you can use the options down at the bottom of the dialog box to give it a sensible name. So first of all I'm going to rename my project as Movies Project because this uh, all the reports here will be based on a database containing information about films. You can then choose a location for your project uh, using the browse button if you need to. Uh, I'm going to leave mine as is. Then all you need to do is to click OK and you should eventually end up with, it might take a little bit longer the first time, but you should find that the Solution Explorer now contains a project called Movies Project with a basic structure and basic empty folders to hold all of your reports. Now if you haven't used Visual Studio before, it might be worth a quick whirlwind tour of the screen to explain how the various windows work. So you should have seen when we created our new uh, project, our movies project, that the top right hand corner window, the Solution Explorer, now contains a list of what's called a solution. A solution is simply a container for multiple projects um, and inside that solution is our one single project called Movies Project. Now if you couldn't already see the Solution Explorer on your screen then you can always head to the view menu and choose the Solution Explorer window. In fact that's true for any of the, the multitude of windows available in Visual Studio. If you can't find it, head to the view menu first and then see if you can see its name in this list here. Another reason you might not be able to see the, uh, the, the detail of the Solution Explorer window is it may well have been minimized and you can see there's this little drawing pin icon in the top right hand corner of all of the little individual windows that allows you to hide them. If I click on the drawing pin symbol then you can see that the Solution Explorer attaches itself as a little tab to the right hand side. I can do that with the Properties window too. To display the information in one of those windows, it's a simple case of hovering your mouse over it and the window will automatically pop out. You can then select options in that window. When you move the mouse cursor away, the window will snap back into the side of the screen. To pin the window back in place again, you simply need to hover over the tab to make the window appear and then click on the drawing pin symbol again. And that will 
attack the window into its previous position. You may find as well that you either deliberately or accidentally undock windows, drag them into other parts of the screen. So if you hover over the title block of one of the windows, you can click and drag to detach it. You can then, if you prefer, simply float it anywhere over the screen you like. You can change its width and height by clicking and dragging on its borders. Um, you can also dock the window back into various positions on the screen, which you can see with the little icons that appear as you drag around. If you click and drag a window onto it, these different arrowed icons, you can get an idea of where your window will be docked if you drop it onto that icon. So if I wanted it to appear back in its original position, first of all I need to drag the properties window over the, the Solution Explorer, and then over the bottom arrow of the four that appear in the middle. That will lock the window back in place. And that's basically how to work with Windows in Visual Studio. Now that you know how to navigate the Visual Studio screen, we're ready to start creating reports. Now, the first report we'll create together won't be based on any uh, underlying data. We'll, uh, we'll simply use this to show you how to create a report, how to add items to it, and then how to manipulate and format those items. So to start with, find in the Solution Explorer the Reports folder. Right-click on that folder and choose the option called Add. There is an option at the top called Add New Report, but that launches a wizard, which I, I prefer not to use wizards. It's, I always find it more useful um, to have full control over the items you're creating. So choose Add and then choose New Item. There is a keyboard shortcut for that as well, Control and Shift and A. And then eventually, once you've chosen that option, you'll see a dialog box containing a list of items you can create. In a report project, the, the most useful item I think you'll use, or the most common one at least, will be a report. So select that option from the list. At the bottom of the dialog box, you can change the name of the item, the report you're going to create. I'm going to call it number one, uh, the basics, and then click the add button. And eventually, you ought to end up with a brand new blank report sitting in the middle of your screen. It can take a little while the first time this is done. And there we go. If I drag this window over across to the right a little bit. So as well as the report itself sitting in the middle of the screen, the, the white area here is where you add all the objects. You'll also find, hopefully, a new toolbox window on the left-hand side and a report data window at the bottom left-hand corner. The toolbox contains all of the report items. Now you might be used to referring to these as, as controls if you've dealt with other Microsoft design tools, but in Report Server they're called report items. So to add an item to the report, there are three ways to do it. The quickest and easiest, if you don't care about the size of the object or where it goes on screen, you can simply double click. So I'm going to find my text box tool and double click the text box. That will make a default sized text box appear in the top left hand corner of your report. You can also click and drag an object from the report items from the toolbox. So if I click and drag a text box and I can position that wherever I like, when I release the mouse button I get a same sized text box, so it's exactly the same size as when I double clicked. And finally the third way to draw a text box, if you click once on the text box tool and then move the mouse cursor somewhere over the screen, you can then click and drag to draw a text box of whatever size you wish. When you've drawn text boxes on the, the report, it's fairly easy to add individual bits of text to them as well. If I click once on the text box, it will be selected, and I can simply type into one of those text boxes uh, directly. I can do the same with the next one, and finally the next one as well. And there we go, that's adding text to text boxes, straightforward as you like. Positioning objects on a report is reasonably straightforward as well. There's a lovely way to line things up in, in Report Server Report. If you click onto the border of a text box, it's quite, quite important that you click either on the border or inside the text box with this cursor that you can see, the, the northwest arrow. If you click onto any text with the standard uh, text cursor, that simply allows you to, to edit the text. What I want to do is click on the text box so that I can see these resizing handles and more importantly 
this move cursor. If I click and drag with the move cursor, you can see that as I get to within a certain distance and in line with one of my other text boxes, it will snap to certain points quite, uh, quite strongly actually. It's a really, really easy way to get things lined up in a neat straight line and positioned an exact distance apart. It works as well if you resize objects. They will snap to certain certain uh, other objects on the on the screen, so it makes things very very easy to keep together. If I've got all my objects lined up together and I want to move them all in a group, then the simplest thing to do is drag a selection box around everything, and then hover over any of the individual move icons, and click and drag together. It makes things extremely easy to lay out the items in your report. If you didn't want to rely on clicking and dragging to position your objects, there are several tools available as well. I'm going to move my items around, make them deliberately uh, jumbled up. And uh, What I'd like to do is line them all up in a neat straight line uh, aligned to the easy text box. If I drag a box around all of the controls, you'll see that one of the control contains uh, a sort of white uh, resizing handles around the border while the other two or the other objects in it will have black resizing handles. When you have multiple objects selected this toolbar up at the top here allows you to, uh, to, to, to align and distribute the objects. So if I choose this option called align lefts everything will line up to the, uh, the, the, the active control or the, the dominant control the one with the white uh, resizing handles. So you can see that Easy peasy and lemon squeezy all sit in a nice straight line. If I'd like to make these text boxes have um, larger or smaller vertical spacing, then you can see these buttons here. I'd like to be able to make them equal, in fact, first of all, so that the, the spacing between all the text boxes becomes equal first. Then I can choose to increase slightly too much or decrease or remove the vertical spacing entirely with these buttons. There are similar controls available for aligning things horizontally and changing the spacing between shapes horizontally as well. The next thing you'll probably want to do with items in your report is to format them. And there are three main ways you can format any object in a report. Uh, first of all, you need to select the item you want to format. And then the easiest way, and probably the one that most people will be will be comfortable with and familiar with from other Microsoft products, is the uh, the formatting toolbar. Uh, so you'll see standard tools on here to be able to change the font typeface. Uh, you can change the font size, of course, and you can change the basic font properties here, bold, italics, underlined. You can change the font color using the font color tool. Uh, you can choose either from a standard preset grid very familiar to you if you've ever used Microsoft Excel before. Or you can choose the more colors option which allows you to choose any of the uh, rather large range of colors your computer can reproduce. Uh, there's a set of standard colors you can select from. Uh, you can change the palette to choose from a larger range using a color circle or square. Or you could even uh, enter your, your red, green and blue values if you need to reproduce your corporate color schemes. So for now we'll just pick something quick and simple using the slider bar and the color circle. Choose OK, choose OK again, and it changes the font color. You can also change the fill color of an object in exactly the same way. So I can choose something, let's choose something fairly hideous at this point, there we go. And there we go, simple and straightforward. The next way you can format an object is using the properties window. If I select the second text box here and have a look in the properties window, there are many, many properties that allow me to modify the options of this text box. Now, depending on how you view your properties window, you might find your, uh, your properties exist in different places. So there are two ways to view it. First of all, there's categorized, which means that if I scroll down, I can should be able to find sections that allow me to change the, the fill color uh, and background image, actually, in the fill section. Um, there's also a font section, which lets me change the font color and then the font typeface and size, etc. Um, but actually changing the options is, is, in, is exactly the same regardless of whether you see them categorized or just alphabetically listed. If I view them alphabetically, some people prefer that, I know. But changing the options is exactly the same. 
So that's two methods for changing the properties of objects. You can either simply use the toolbar or use the properties window. And finally, the third way is to use the properties dialog box. If I right click on one of my text boxes, there should be always an option called properties, in this case text box properties, because that's the type of object I've selected. When you select that option, eventually, you'll see a dialog box that contains several different categories of options. So there's a fill tab on the left hand side here, and the options I'm provided with are exactly the same as for all of the others, just done in a slightly different way. Find the font tab as well, and choose a different font, and a different font size. Choose OK, and then all the options are applied to the selected item. The final step in this simple demonstration is to save and preview the report so that we can see what it looks like when the report is running. You can tell when a report has had changes that haven't been saved with the little asterisk that appears next to its name on the design tab. Now you can manually save a report by simply clicking the save button as you would normally on a toolbar or pressing Control S as well. Alternatively you can just jump straight into the preview of a report if I click the preview tab, we'll see that the report is saved automatically first and then the, the report is run. So you can see what it will look like when the report runs in the real world. This little toolbar that appears, which will be more useful when we actually base our reports on data, allow you to navigate between different pages of the report. You can stop loading, you can return to a previous report, you can refresh, print, print preview and save or export the report. The export button is quite useful, it allows you to save the report out into various different output types. The most useful ones I think personally being Excel and Word, but uh, you'll find all of those useful I think perhaps in the real world. If I want to return back to my report to make further changes to it, I simply need to head back to the design view and I can make further changes in terms of formatting, adding new objects, etc. But those are all the basics of creating a new report project and adding new basic reports. If you've enjoyed this training video, you can find many more online training resources at www.wiseowl.co.uk.